Hi guys. Huh, I'm back. It has been a hot minute. I think maybe nearly three weeks now. It is currently Friday, April the 19th, quarter past nine in the morning, and I'm off work. Um, I haven't spoken to you since before my uh, Easter Sunday. Oh my goodness me, Easter Sunday was the last day I, I posted um, a video up. Uh, yeah, so I've got my giveaway to give away and not a lot of stitching. I didn't do a video when I could because I don't think I've done a lot of stitching. I've got a lot of things to show you here, but I've not done a lot of stitching. So what have I been doing? Well, my week off, which was 10 days because I had Easter Sunday, a full seven days, and then two days of the following week, which was last week. They were two of my days off. I had three days off in that week. Um, it's a bit short on hours, but I take that on the chin and just spend my time doing other things. Um, most notably, please observe my greenhouse is built, finished, done. Uh, got some very small baby plants in it, but we all will be able to watch the tomatoes and the cucumbers grow now. Um, that is a 10 foot by 8 foot greenhouse. As you can see, it fits the space available to it perfectly because the pagoda with a uh, mature wisteria, which will come out into bloom very, very soon, the buds are just popping, um, is there and the shed is there. There is this much gap between each. So the 10 foot greenhouse fitted in just. We did have to build out the decking this much like one, literally one deck board out, just, just to accommodate the, the, the width of the greenhouse. But that was taken down from my, my old house, um, put into the back of a van, which had to be really taken to pieces. We broke one pane of glass, which was one of the very big, those panes of glass there are five foot by two foot. It is tough and safety glass. Um, we broke one, so, I think that on balance we did very very well the greenhouse is all back together so that was one of the major things we've done um my my dad's t table is here his teak table made from teak planks from a gun carriage from the second world war is here um that his dad made and my settle is here and my sofa is here which currently hasn't been cleaned yet but it's currently sporting a very beautiful quilt um, like a king size quilt that my mum made years ago and uh, <clears throat> had stashed in her loft after she got you know that she'd had it on her own bed for years and then so she's she's given that to me to put over my sofa until my sofa's in good enough nick to um yeah so that's all here so that's great and a lot of my other bits and pieces and my furniture and basically I'm here um probably six nights out of seven I'm here now which is lovely it's a lot of driving um, this morning, for example, I've driven my, my two girls to school, come back. I'll then drive back up and get just Flora tonight. And then I've got to drive her back and she's going on a camp with the Air Cadets this weekend. So I've got to find out where to take her and take her to that. But <clears throat> it is what it is. My little boy has been here now a couple of times. We'll slowly ramp it up until I can... He's, he doesn't feel confident yet staying here overnight because he's only ever being with his dad overnight um being obviously with me but he's it's it's a it's a complicated situation basically but gradually gradually he'll be staying with me more and more until he says oh I'm tired I'm just going to go to bed and then he'll stay so that's going to be all be fine too so that's the overview done um did take my did go down to see my girl my big girl Maddie um she's <laughs> She's okay. She's getting on. Um, took them into London. Showed Lizzie and Flora a bit of London. Lizzie, Lizzie had the long shoes on and got very sore feet. So we had to. We spent a lot of time riding the Circle Line. Um, we did go out to the Fabric Quarter and go in just the one shop because I said to Flora, "We only need to go in one shop." And she was like, oh, "Only one shop? But what if I don't find what I need?" Now, if ever you've in London and you need like dressmaking fabric, go to Goldhawk road it's the next one after shepherd's bush right at the end of the circle line before hammersmith get off there you walk down the station turn turn the right the first fabric shop you come to has everything in the world you could ever need 
fabric wise for dressmaking that one shop so we went in there flora picked out this navy blue heavy i don't think it's silk um but it's dark navy blue and when it catches the light it's like silver it's really shot so it goes really super silver sparkly and then when it's not it's it's navy blue but really heavy drapey very silky but heavy and drapey should make a beautiful prom dress so we got three meters of that got back on the circle line and pootled back to king's cross <laughs> anyway um and then uh, drove back up had a couple more days and last week I was in work, just getting back into the swing of things. The kids were still off, so I was doing a lot of running around. So even though I only did four days at work last week, I really don't feel like I had a lot of stitchy time. Plus being here and trying to sort things out, there's literally stuff everywhere. But <clears throat> it's very important with me moving here that I can organise my stuff. This is my, this is my opportunity to get everything organised and get everything where I can reach it and I found some things so things that I can get on with things that I can do things that have got missed so I've got I've pulled a few things I'm going to show you and talk over what eventually I'm going to be doing and then I stopped went um so I worked Wednesday Thursday I had Friday off and then since Friday I've just worked six days so early on Saturday, long day Sunday, the 6-4 on a Sunday, which just knocks the stuffing out of you. I mean, you finish at four o'clock, but you're knackered. And then I've done this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I've done 12-8, which is a weird sort of shift because I can take the kids to school, but I live, I sleep here. So I have to go up, get, get back to my house, which is 40 miles away, in time for Robin to go to work and then I'll get the kids up and take them to school and then it's half past eight and I'm where the kids go to school so then it's like well what do I do now so one one day I went back to my house and packed up like four big boxes of books and stuff and they're just there I think a lot of my a lot of my books are going in the loft and I'm good with that there's you know there's a house full of belongings here already so we need to carefully choose what we're going to keep out and what we're going to put away. And I'm going to have to put some of Richard's stuff away and he's a bit resistant. Um, bear in mind that he moved his mum in in about, I think, 2019-ish. He moved his mum in and she then, her dementia got bad and then she had a stroke and passed away. So a lot of her belongings are here and he's still not ready to wrap them up and put them in the loft I'm not in any way shape or form saying get rid of anything but some of the stuff he's keeping just because he likes it reminds him that some of it needs to be wrapped up and put in the loft now just bits and pieces you know because I have stuff too and he has stuff that he's put away because he got his because he wanted his house to look homey for his mum so she'd be put all her stuff out but it's been nearly two years now, so I'm going to gently, very gently. But some of, I need some of my things around me too, and not just all my craft stuff, which is everywhere. Especially in this room, I keep looking at the table. The table is piled high with boxes to sort out. But I'm getting there. I've done, I've done quite a lot. Anyway, stitching. Not done a lot. I've made some bold decisions, which I'm going to talk about now. Okay, so the first thing I did mostly and you'll be able to see how much of this i've done the, the week i was off work basically the only thing i stitched on was my barbara anna spring lady let me just get the pattern off the there so she's not done and i am going to put her away in her current state which seems silly because i should probably finish her but the last time i filmed on easter sunday i was just starting her on easter sunday wasn't i so she's now here so absolutely beautiful the spring the spring lady gorgeous i love her she's on 36 count um lugana the lakeside needlecraft granite with a huge coffee stain here and a huge coffee stain here which i was unaware of but you can see clear as day especially with the light shining through it you can see it less when there's not light shining through it um 
but that's where she is um so i've got this little tiny bit here to fill in and the rest of her dress and her feet but i am going to pop her away now because it's time to move on so i've done loads of her she's been nice and easy just to bring this and this paper pattern in terrible disarray i did make a working copy this because this is a kit that i got from nick moscow and i actually sent to moscow for it when i finished all four of them i will be passing the pattern along because i don't believe you can get the pattern otherwise and none of us are ordering anything from russia anytime soon so that's uh, i will be passing the pattern along when i'm done but i'm not done yet and <laughs> i'm not quite two ladies into it now the sun's coming round oh it's really overcast so i was hoping i could get this you can see the light you can see the greenhouse is going to get good good sunlight um i was hoping i was going to get without the light going weird um what else did I, i'm just i've just looked that way my wormery is up and running i bought a wormery maybe 10 years ago and had it running for maybe a year and then it went by the wayside so we brought it we jet washed it i ordered from the original people from the same company which thankfully is still going strong making wormeries here in the uk it's all recycled plastic it's all been bleached by the sun a bit but it's perfect works beautifully um i ordered half a kilo of tiger worms and a starter pack which was a coir a coir block and some worm food and i now have a worm a wormery functioning again which is basically like a, a very small scale compost bin but the worm poo the worm I want to say vermicelli, but that's not what it is. Um, vermicelli is pasta, obviously. It's very fine noodles. Um, but it's something, it's a word a bit like that. Basically, the compost they make is like gold. It's the richest, most delicious compost for enriching. So anyway, that's what I've got going now. I just saw it there. So that's something else I've got going and have got on with and got sorted. Well, I've not been stitching very much. Um, uh, what else? What else? Um, did I not bring in? What else did I not bring in? Right, I'll go and, I'll go and get the key in a minute. Um, basically, my stitching for the key and my super size treasure hunt bookshelf has come down to a bag. From Arts and Designs, marvellous, marvellous company. If you are in the UK or, or or abroad, but UK, if you need DMCs, these are 89p, I think. They might have been a few pennies more. Um, from Arts and Designs, they only charge a first-class post. £1.75 for this, plus two skeins of silk, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and they came, I ordered them, they were dispatched, and they arrived. So I ordered them in the evening and I had them by not the next day, but the day after that. They are that good and that that quick at delivering. And I got the correct things that I ordered, which helps. So art and designs, arts and designs, absolutely would recommend. Um, there is their website is very old. Style works very well. It is very hard if you're ordering silks it's very hard to see which color you're ordering because it's a tiny little block that's my only thing is have a good look work out which colors you want and then like search for them dmc is easy because they're numbered anchors anchors easy because they're numbered but the silks like when you put your arrow over it and click it it puts it in the cart and then it tells you what color it is if you see what I mean. So I winged it and ordered two skeins, of, two skeins of silk and they're perfect. But I was lucky. It could have equally been slightly the wrong tone because I couldn't really see. But I could easily have Googled it and pulled up a bigger picture from one, two, three stitch or something, but I didn't. But that's what I'd do there. Um, they only sell the prepackaged fabrics. They sell just about every pattern known to man which is really useful um, and very keenly priced, would recommend. Anyway, so my key and my treasure hunt bookshelf 
are down to this pack. In this pack, I have 310, 550, 823, 414, 318, 317 and 415. And that's it. So, my treasure hunt bookshelf, I've made a bold decision that I am going to colour complete all the 823. Now, I'm I have just finished colour completing the 823 on the key, which I will stop the video and go and get in a second because I've left it in the other room. But I am my treasure hunt bookshelf. I am going to colour complete the 823, which is 15,000 stitches. So I'm sorry, guys, but for the next two months. So May and June. We're only going to see navy blue going into this, but I'm going to colour complete 823. There are, I think, four other colours that have more stitches left to stitch, notably the 310, which I believe is somewhere north of 50,000 stitches left to stitch of, of 310. But 823 is my favourite navy blue ever. I'm using it in the pointed fifth. I'm using the 823 or 12 in the pointed fifth. And I've just I've just colour completed it on the key. I ordered myself three skeins because I had none left in my stash and none left in um, the sea beacon and none left in the other fully kitted project that I have. And I've used it all. So I ordered myself three skeins and I thought, right, I'm going to do myself some 823. Um, and then I thought, what if I do all the 823? And that's what I'm going to do. It's going to take me this month's stitches and the next two months' stitches. So it's 2%, 2 and, 2 and a bit percent of it is 83, which is fine. And that's what I'm doing. So it's a little hard to see where the progress is. And I think I am um, at about 0.4 for the month. So I'm, I'm getting on with the month. It's the 19th. I will catch myself up. I always do. So here is the bit that probably looks like, oh, where it was the last time I filmed, where the Q-snap was. That's what it looks like now. So I did fill in quite a bit more there. There's still some gaps and it's either a fan. I think the red bit is a curtain and then above it, there looks like a fan. And I'm not sure if there's a mute, something here. It might be a musical instrument. I think it might have a long neck. It might be a lute or something there. I'm not too sure it's not finished yet so i've finished all the 823 over here and then i kind of went this way so as i'm going i'm just moving the cue snap a little bit and following myself along and finishing off anywhere 823 is so there's a big dragon there but i'm not stitching him in yet i'm doing the 823 around him so i've done the 823 around the dragon and then i've come up here and then there's a big, it's above the books. A lot of the 823 is above the books before the next shelf. So here we've got a clear line. That's the wooden bookshelf of the shelf above of the top shelf. So there's a lot of 823. And as you can see, it, it mingles in with, I think, probably 939 and 310 to give it that dark shaded background. But it goes all the way along here. And then it goes all over the place. There's even up here in the sky bit here, these stitches here are 823. Now, why do you suppose I didn't do them at the time? So anywhere that 823 crops up, I will stitch. Um, obviously, there's swathes and swathes of fabric that I haven't even. Oh, my God, look at the marks on it. I haven't even touched yet. So and all of this at the bottom here, I haven't I've, I haven't even touched any of this so give or take splashing coffee on it apparently um, so I'm going to colour complete 823 so it might be quite boring to watch because usually I put a lot of colour into it and I do a lot of oh let's find him and stitch him and it's something really obvious that I've stitched in the month but I'm going to spend the next two months and what's left of this month doing 823 and this guys the end of april will be 24 percent which is two years stitching every month on it 
basically almost every day. But that's two years, 24%. This time next year, it should be coming up to 36%. This is, a, this is a long game. This is my long game piece. I'm just going to pause here, put my old phone on charge because I have got a giveaway to, to do and get the key, which I can sort of show you. Don't know how good with this weird, bright, lovely sunlight and beautiful. Doesn't It doesn't look blue, but the sky is bright blue now. There are some clouds, but the sky is looking beautiful out there. With my dear little greenhouse, well dear quite big greenhouse, which is illuminating behind me, giving me weird backlight. But I built it. It got done. I'm still quite impressed with 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 the process of living here and the, the idea that we finish off jobs. Because where I was living before, nothing ever got finished. And this is a refreshing change. But I do need to tidy up my stuff. I'll be two seconds. Well, I'll be no time for you. I'll be a minute or two for me. Right. I'm back with the key. And the other thing that I needed to pick up. Right. So it's very hard to show you with the key. I've been stitching on it. Uh, yesterday I put, um, I think, eight, 800 stitches into it. Which was pretty much all the stitching I got done yesterday. Um, but... I am currently stitching with four and four on the key and I put in the whole pile of stitches yesterday in four one four. Um so very hard to show you because all like that I've been colour completing so it's like yeah I've filled in some stitches. So basically all the eight two three is done um there was a lot of eight two three that i had missed up here which is kind of on the background so i've got the black and the eight two three which you can kind of see the two different colors but there was a lot of stitches left to go of eight two three and it's done and now i'm doing four one four which is the gray and I'm currently working here and all I can sort of do is show you the difference here I've worked in the 414 I've got to here this whole brick and all of this is going to be peppered like this with the 414 basically um, and I'm I think I'm I'll maybe color complete the 414 I'm not too sure how many stitches I've got left to do of that um, because it's on my phone and I'm recording on my phone so we'll have to wait and see how I get on but I am working on the key as well but um, hit and miss you know I'll do a few thousand stitches and then put it down for a week but when I do pick it up I'm only going to be using the colours that are in this bag and obviously the 310 and the 823 are already finished but I got these specifically because they're in the key and I need them so these and that and the 823s in there and that's my treasure hunt bookshelf so all i need right now going forwards while i'm sorting out everything that i have going on in this house is one bag that's all i need and i really should find a nicer bag than a plastic bag to use um then while my phone charges up a little bit so i can do my giveaway then i sorted out my fabric and dyed my fabric to do Jack Be Nimble, the new long dog sampler. I'll put a big picture of it up here. Now, when I looked at this immediately, I didn't see a, a rectangular sampler. I saw a big long skinny sampler because to me it's three definite columns like I said last time when I was talking about it if you can remember back to Easter Sunday last day of March um yeah it's been 19 days it's been nearly three weeks um I saw a long skinny sampler and I had a long piece of fabric which was 20 count easy grid 
it's no longer 20 count easy grid it is now 20 count motley blue with some very possibly burnt bits i had such time getting this dyed the color i wanted to so first i tried ice dyeing and all the ice dyeing did was very dark blobs all i got left with was very was very dark blobs these big blobs were the ice dyeing so not a success for me that time that i did it i then did the scrunchy over dye i then submerged it in navy blue dye <laughs> I then did another scrunchy over dye and um, I'm, I'm happy with the colour. That is quite a good representation of the colour that I've got. Um, and it's kind of mottly, kind of speckly. I'm quite happy with it, actually. It turned out OK. And I decided that I was going to because I couldn't dis I, I didn't know how dark it was going to come out. And I thought if it comes out really dark, I'll do a light I'll use light colour on it and if it comes out kind of medium I'll use 939 or something on it a very dark blue I'm just gonna have to organize Cosmo a second let me just get Cosmo in I'll be back sorry I hadn't seen Cosmo yet this morning well I I saw him at half past three this morning when I ejected him out of the cat flap because he was scratching on my chest scratching his very sore neck so he, he wore the cone of shame because of his leg and now he's got he had he had a couple of little sores open up on his neck well of course he scratched them and scratched them and they've healed but it's now sort of spread he now looks like a strangled chicken so he's basically bald between here and here with a couple of little sore bits that he scratches so i've just gone actually what really relieves him i cut an old tea towel up into strips and i basically wet a strip put it round him like a collar and tie a knot in the back and it's like a bandana and that while it's wet and cold it really relieves it but obviously after a while he gets a bit bored of that and wriggles out of it and then pegs it into the garden and scratches it and it's like oh my god he's had two rounds of antibiotics we've got a special spray that's meant to take the itch out of it which only works a little bit we're doing our best <laughs> but honestly Cosmo stop scratching it i just had to wet up and put it put his bandana back on basically which he he wears he tolerates i think it relieves the it goes i think it goes crusty as it dries and then of course it itches like fury here's big old sid sid come up here come and meet i don't know if you can have sid sid is enormous sid sid no he's going that way you can see there's my propagator there's some of my issue with stuff mm, it's an issue anyway ah, take the finger away from there right let's put that back okay jack be nimble so i bought the pattern i printed out the cover sheet and basically ran the other way from the way i'm doing it so light fabric dark stitching here this is how I'm going to stitch Jack Be Nimble. So I saw it as that's the very bottom. That bit there I figured was the bottom. And then as I cut the three columns. So that is an entire column. I like the way that flows. But then this bit here. Cosmo, stop scratching. Honestly, he's such a pest. And then this bit's one column from one column. This bit here. Is almost a full bit from another column and then the lobsters which were here I've moved right to the top because it looks like they should be up there to me so Jack be nimble is going to be a big long skinny there's lots of little doodle doodles and I need somewhere to put my initials and the date possibly here and then there's fishies and things which if I think it needs a little bit of a twiddle, I'll put a little bit of a twiddle in. But there we go. So, as it stands, it's in Pattern Keeper. And as long as I keep this around, and I know what I'm going to do and where to stop, it's going to be painful if I just stitch this and just stitch along, which hopefully I'll remember that I need to change it up a little bit. My start is 
quite small. Um, oh, so I ordered from Arts and Designs two um, two skeins of a Karen Water Lily, and I ordered opal, which is very like mother, the mother of pearl, the, the dinky dye mother of pearl. It's very like that. It is um, like an ivory base with very pale pink, pale peach, and like a pale yellow running through it. And as a guess, it's it's a good guess because I couldn't really see, but opal and it looked pale and I thought it's going to be pale and shimmery. So I've got two skeins, one which I just unrolled and cut at the bottom so they're quite long that's double they're double length there so it's longer than i'd normally have them they're maybe half a meter long there 12 strands and i started because it was 20 count which is 40 count over two and i always use one strand but i don't know if it's because it's dark but one strand didn't show very nicely so i'm doing t over two i might need another skein or two i don't know we'll find out so here's where i am so this is, these are basically just fill in so there's the bottom so that's that's as wide as it's going to be and that's maybe five and a half inches maybe i don't think it's quite six inches wide so that's its maximum width so i've got plenty of fabric to put it into the q snap and i've got plenty of fabric going forwards going up and that's the start of a long dog I didn't need to start. But when I saw it, I just thought, that's what I want to do. I want to do a big, tall, skinny one. So that's what it's going to be. And that's where it, can I get them about the same size? There. So it's, I've started it. And it's really nice. And it, because it's Ada, it's it's really easy to stitch on but because i've over dyed it so many times can you see it's almost stripy there the oh my goodness me i had trouble getting this dyed it didn't really want to it didn't really want to i did take some clips and videos but honestly it all failed everything i tried basically failed it took me four or five goes to get like the little veiny like the veiny mottling in it that was hard going and then i microwaved it and boy did I microwave it, hence why I think some of it might be a little bit scorched because there is some very definite oranges in here which from experience means I nearly set it on fire. It, I thought it was completely covered, it was wrapped in cling film, dripping wet wrapped in cling film with like salt which sets this dye poured all over it um, but overall I'm quite pleased with it how it turned out but it is textural it is stripy which is strange it looks like um, for those of you who've had kids like muslins you know like baby muslins that's what it feels like I think basically I've almost murdered this fabric I think it's come very close to actual murder and now it's raining now the lights really good because it's raining this is what this fabric looks like. That's a really good representation of its colour. But my goodness me, it was hard to get it dyed like this. That was not an easy process. I was faffing around with this for two days. And the fabric looks ruined. <laughs> I'm going to stitch on it. It's absolutely fine. But I think I might have ruined it. So two Karen Water Lilies. And a tiny piece of Happy Mail turned up. From a very 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 i am so appreciative i got some dinky dye down under blues yes i now have five skeins of it this is my ultra favorite um thank you very very much i have your address i will be posting you some goodies thank you so much for getting these from me these were the three that one two three stitch had in stock i have them in my possession and I'm very thankful thank you for sending them to me because I really love that colour and the way my brain works I need some of that in my stash 
and yes I'm going to be using probably realistically nearly two skeins of it to finish off my long dog and I would be gutted if I didn't have any and you know what I didn't do when I did Anzac I didn't do any of the back stitch on Anzac I thankfully still have the PDF of Anzac and almost all the back stitch on Anzac is down under blues and I didn't allow for it at all. I just used up the thread I had left over from Anzac. So I can, now I can find Anzac. Oh, I can do the bloody backstitch on it. Because I didn't do that. It's now raining. Jack be nimble. In process. So I'm just going to give my phone a few more minutes. I'm going to show you a couple of things I found. While I was tidying up stuff. I found four project bags that I made I don't even know when they are they have a quilted back they are all different my most favorite fabric is this wading birds fabric which I used on my bag for my treasure hunt bookshelf so I've got a vinyl front going on I've got a quilted back That is patchwork fabric. That's not patchwork. But look, each one is different. And I found four of these. And look what they're missing. Some thread. I actually know what that's from. Because I know what was on it when I picked these up. <laughs> I'll put it back with it where it belongs. All that's missing is the binding. So I'm going to get the binding on these guys. I'm going to stick them in my Etsy shop. So they're quite sturdy because they are, they've got wadding, they've got a layer of wadding and they are um, quilted. Before I had my walking foot, so it's, it's loosely done, but they're the vinyl, sparkly vinyl, vinyl pocket, and I found four of them. And bar the binding, they're done. So what I'll do is I'll finish these and I'll probably make a little scissor fob that I can hang off the, the dingle dangle. But they'll be sold as a bag with a scissor fob. So they'll be going in my Etsy shop just as soon as I set to. Yeah, it's pouring with rain. I set to and get the, uh, the binding done on them. So I found those. See, I make these things. I do make things. I get on with stuff. Do I finish anything off? No. Found those. Another thing I found was a log cabin quilt top. Now this is circa 2004 or 5. I made this to go on the spare bed in my bedroom, in my old, not in my bedroom, the spare bed in the guest room of my old house, which I moved out of in 2008 so I can date this really really carefully and I didn't realize I still had this it was a fully finished quilt it met with um, something some reason I think I spilt something catastrophic on it because because there are little holes in it I have cut little holes but it's log cabin look at it it's a quilt top it's a big quilt top each one has the center is a piece of batik and then it is white and blues and they're all my fabrics all my favorite fabrics because this is before i bought fabric to this is you know we're talking 20 years ago now this is this is vintage so I have this huge quilt top. And what am I going to do with this quilt top? I am not going to make it back into a quilt for a bed. I am going to make this into 11 by 11 Q-Snap project bags. Of which I will keep one. Because I can simply cut out the pattern for the quilt top, for the for the project bag
and each one will be different and unique won't it and it'll sit differently as to where I obviously slightly control where the centers go this isn't quite 11 by 11 for the that's that's probably mm, nine inches I'm gonna think about what I'm gonna do with these I think I'm just going to use it as fabric and make project bags and re-quilt it but into project bags so because realistically I'm not going to use it as a quilt but it's beautiful oh look there's look it's 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 lovely I just love it I love the fabrics they all they all mean something to me they all trigger like memories to me and I must have spent quite a long time making lights and darks that one that's probably the darkest fabric in it and it's machine I did it on my machine with a lovely quarter inch seam allowance and I think I'm going to turn this which I will fold up but you can see it's a it's a full king size quilt top that was a was a fully finished quilt I think I had quilted it very basically like literally just machined the lines where the um where the 11 where the the log cabins met i think i just quilted it along those lines i can't see anywhere where there's quilt lines that have been machined and then undone i've obviously undone it at some point and taken it off the batting and the background i can't remember really why other than the fact that i moved the house and i don't i don't i was it I was in toddler dreamland then I had a four-year-old a one-year-old and was pregnant with my next one so I can't really remember very much of it at all but I have this huge thing and I found it beautifully folded at the bottom of a box a sealed box it's been kept beautifully of, of dressmaking fabric so that's where I found it as I sorted through the boxes of stuff and I was like I had no idea I still had this but as a quilt I don't want it I don't want it in its current form so I'm going to upcycle it but it is handmade by me and I'm going to upcycle it into something other other so I found that and I'm going to do something with that it won't be today I've got a lot to do today but it won't be today but I will turn that into the 11 by 11 inch few snap bags I think which is pretty much what I'm going to call them going forwards if I find ready-made project bags I will finish them and put them in my shop but going forwards my bags are going to be a little bit more unique they're not going to be a vinyl front that size project bag that that'll fit an A4 piece of paper they're going to be specifically for holding big projects in few snaps and things like that they're going to be quilted they're going to be patchwork i found they're upstairs pieces of finished patchwork that i used to make baby quilts out of little hexes we're talking that size hexy and i've got like four or five that can i can turn into project bags like a and paper pieced hexagon project bag and they're done I just need to construct you know I just need to make sure they're the right sort of size and make and do some construction which I'm hopefully going to be able to sort out going forwards I have a sewing machine table my propagators on my sewing machine table which was the dressing table upstairs I have no need for a dressing table I don't do my hair I don't wear makeup I don't need to sit in a bedroom and look at myself in the morning I just don't so the dressing table is a sewing machine table I've got the box the drawers are full of boxes and as I find things like spools of thread and magic clips and this and that I can put them away which is what I'm doing that's how I'm sorting out otherwise I'm just putting everything back in a box and getting nowhere with it so I'm kind of getting there I've also found quite a lot of these the zip set in 
with the vinyl joined to it but nothing on the back so I think if I make my bags to fit the big projects I can now just stitch like I did like I did the it's right here hang on like I did this one just put the pocket on the front of the big bag that fits the Q-snap I think this has got long dogs in it it has this has got a whole load of long dogs in it yay and I'm putting my down under blues in there too they should actually be in the pocket shouldn't they and there's a DMC in there 841 oh that's the vintage one that's the one that came out <laughs> that's the one I used that's the one that came out of the I need to put it back in um, blah, 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 Celtic lady, possibly. I'm not too sure why that's in there. It's either one I've randomly found on the floor and put in a bag because I picked it up. But we're all good. Got everything I need in there. Got my bits and, <laughs> got bits and but I'm just seeing what's in the window there. I should really just put that down. And then the only other thing I've dredged out to show you is my big blanket. Because in the evenings, I have been putting on odd rows onto this. Now, this is a scrap blanket, which was designed to use up all of the pastel shade double knitting that I have. But then it appears that I also purchased multiple balls to help me along the way with this. Anyway, so this blanket is being knitted two strands together on a six millimeter very big needle uh, a circular needle but I'm just knitting it straight it's not circular I just prefer knitting large bits of knitting on circular needles now the first time I ever saw that was my grandma who I called Grandpam because her name was Pam and she used to knit a lot of k facet sweaters and shawls and she always had her straight knitting on a circular needle and she just said to me that I've got more stitches on than fits on my straight needles and it's so heavy because she was elderly it's so heavy and she knitted right up until basically the day she died um, my mum's got all her last few bits and finished off some of her projects that didn't didn't get finished um, and uh, she was almost 93 by the way this isn't and she passed away years ago it's not recent um so uh and she said it, it just distributes the weight onto my lap better as i'm knitting because realistically the only bit you're holding is your needle and everything else sits in your lap so this blanket um all my balls were weighed out into uh, this one I've only just started about this size I believe they're about 40 grams I think it's not very it's not very much anyway however much it is it's probably less but most of them are acrylic this is a cotton beautiful cotton this one will have been from my stash but a lot of the acrylics are either ones I had or just like style craft special or um I've got some chip chippies and I've got some lion brand ones things like that just just straight bog standard double knitting acrylic yarn i like an acrylic yarn it goes in the washing machine when it gets manky and everything gets manky i've got three cats living here everything gets covered in hair needs to be washed and now and again tumble dry is even better so i'm knitting a plain and a pattern together and i've done it so that the join changes at different points so i've got half a ball and a full ball kind of on the go all the time this one will run out I'll join another random ball on I'm trying not to control it I have a little bit um, I'll join a different um, multicolored um, Marley whatever it is there's a there's basically a plain and a multicolor bag and I just grab one out of each so I've just changed over to this peachy color 
and I'm working on this one and I'm doing a very very basic diamond shape just done in reverse stocking stitch there you go quite an easy repeat and the lights a bit gone a bit off it's got a five stitch border of moss stitch seed stitch up the side and basically two rows the same and then move the stitches along one to make it diamonds and then when I get to the end of when I change a colour I just tie a knot and carry on so I've got quite a lot of this blanket done actually and it is I don't know if I ever showed it when I first started knitting it I think I probably did but it's been all it's been a while and I am still chugging along with it so it's a proper blanket size it's probably four foot wide and it is now <laughs> this long I'll turn it on its side it's now and you can see what I mean about it changing colour every it's loosely striped but it is getting on for being quite a big blanket and basically I'm going to keep going until either I am pig sick of it or it's longer than a bed and then it's probably always going to live on a sofa probably in here but it is big and it's snuggly and basically I can push this put this right over myself in a big blanket actually over me here it's on the floor so it's quite big already and I do a row or two now and again if I get two rows if I get four rows that's great slowly slowly it creeps along I've probably done I think when I started knitting it here I think I was probably down about here I've probably put a foot on it since I've been here but again I just found this in stuff I was tidying up to bring here and I found the yarn first and I was like what is that from it's not a temperature it's not a temperature blanket because I've got a I've got a crochet temperature blanket that I'm Five months into and it's from 2021 possibly 2020 could even be 2019 I was crocheting before cross stitching wow it's quite old I don't know what to do with it it's like this if they're little granny squares uh, cold inside warm outside fruit one for each day obviously and it's like this big <laughs> it's a big long 30 30 squares because I joined as I went 30 squares this long what do you do with that I think UFO it for sure I mean it's been UFO'd for what six years probably so anyway this is not a UFO this is a carrying on with I haven't done much crochet lately I've been I've been picking up this in the evenings when I've not been frantically driving around my car all bloody working I don't I don't like late I don't like lates. I've got lates next week. I just have to put a smile on my face and get on with them. But I don't like lates. Don't like the way I don't see my kids when I do lates. Anyway, big blanket coming on. Just keeping going. So, yeah, not got a video for three weeks and then you've got a stupid long video. So I suppose I should better, better do something about getting this processed and uploaded at least the broadband super quick here and it'll actually upload today. Um, giveaway. Right, let me get my old phone, which should have some charge in it now. So, the oh, I just need to switch it on. Oh my god, it's going to go bananas with because it'll connect up to the Wi-Fi and it'll do a million things. So the last time I recorded three weeks ago, I touted cute spring needle minders which um, are ready to be I've started listing them but I haven't made them live so I need to do that and they should go live in the Etsy shop very very shortly I'm hoping tomorrow perhaps because I've edited all the pictures I've done I'm not sure what that was I've just dropped something somewhere here we go oh gonna buzz, 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 buzz in my hand indefinitely now it's on the Wi-Fi so I can go to Google and 
I offered up coffee and eggs, the perfect thing to stitch for next Easter. Hmm, she says confidently. Come on, Google. Google is spooling. Come on, Google. That's having a think. I'm going to get a million and twelve notifications in on it. Here we go. Let's go and... Oh, I need to go and retrieve my... Come on, you can do it. Coffee and Eggs, which was the Artsy Housewife pattern, which was a gift to me. Pass, pass, pass along a stashy. And one of my needle minders, which I offered up as a giveaway. And I had lots of lovely comments. The keyword was Easter. You... Oh, come on, come on, come on. And my kids no, I'm not watching that. Shush. Crikey, that was the last thing I was watching on here. You. There we go. Come on. It's loading. Uh, oh, 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 everything's going in. View channel. Nope. My poor phone's trying to think. And it's that one. Uh, share. Copy link. Copied. Oh, I've got three weeks worth of Pinterest coming in here because I never turn the notifications off for Pinterest. So it's all just upload coming in now. I can get this done as soon as it. Right. Pinterest is just going bananas. I'm just going to be going to Google and we're going to go random comment picker, which should be like my first search. Random comment picker. Look. Right, I'm just going to pause this because I'm just staring at my thing. I'll be two secs. Okay, got it sorted out. So, I've got 52 comments with the word Easter in it. And we're going to just pick a, call, pick a winner. And it has picked Willow Stitches. I have your address already. Happy Easter, Emily. Enjoy your time off and I hope your big move goes slowly. Right, so Willow Stitches. You, I think, won something from me. I Did you win one of the last ones? Um, if you won one of my last giveaways, it might have been Flossmus. If it was Flossmus, I'll send you this needle minder. If you've just won one of these needle minders from me, I will send you a different needle minder. <laughs> okay? Because um, I recognise you really clearly. And I'd have to check on my Instagram to see what where, when you won something from me. But I believe I have your address. If you've moved since since I last sent you something, or you're waiting on one of these, that's fine because I still haven't posted them because I'm me. Um, but I will post everything together. So uh, I'll sort that out fairly shortly. Right, guys, Willow Stitches, this is yours. And I think... That's well over an hour of me probably just staring at my phone. Sorry about that. But my poor little old thing. We know the story of this one. But it's useful for that. <laughs> because I need two devices to, to do because I'm recording on my phone now. Because it's so much better. Right, guys. I'm going to insert the couple of pictures I need to insert just of last time stitching. And I'll get this uploaded to you. And we'll be on our way to having a video at last. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to post again. I'm not going to stick to a schedule at the moment because everything's very up in the air. So I'll show you everything I've done when I come back next time. As I say, my treasure hunt bookshelf is going to be 823. The key is going to be 415, I think I'm using. And I've got a new long dog on and I'm going to pull, I'm going to put the other one away, um, my dreaming, my seasons girl away i'm going to pull something different for a bit and we'll see what i find and see what i want to stitch on 
Right guys, thank you so much for watching. Sorry about the dull bit there, I was trying to get my phone working. Um, and we will watch the progress of my, my very big <laughs> 10 foot greenhouse, which is unbelievably built. Yeah, the door goes onto the, onto the decking that the picnic table is over there. It goes onto there. So luckily the door slides like this. And then the wisteria is like, ah, as you go in. But everything fitted. Getting that glass in the back of that was very tricky. We had to get it. I had to squiggle behind, put the clips in the glass, squiggle out, and then we had to push it against the fence. We got it done, but my goodness me. And it was pouring with rain. We had a window. It was last Saturday. I was on an early, so I got back here about three o'clock. That was our window to put the glass. We'd already done the frame to get the glass in. And it was pouring with rain. We finished the greenhouse. And honestly, within half an hour, it was beautiful blue sky, beautiful evening. But if we hadn't have done it, it would have rained all night, wouldn't it? Anyway, it's raining now. I will see you later guys thank you so much for watching me and putting up with me being lackadaisical about posting but you know i've had a little bit of life going on um i'm feeling a lot more settled i really like being living here it's just a lot of trucking about right i now need to go and get all flora's kit ready for her cadet weekend she is marching around in the lake district somewhere so i need to sort that right guys i will see you soon bye bye